Okay, so in this section of the tutorial, we're going to look at essentially how to add fog or volumetric lighting or whatever to the scene. Um, so to get started, what we'll need to do is we're going to need to use the sun and sky. Well, we're not going to use the sun and sky rig, but we are going to go ahead and go down to the RS environment under the sun and sky. And if you can't find it in a menu for some reason, one of the things you can always do is you can hold down shift hit C, and if you type in RS and then ENV is usually enough to get us to the Redshift environment, you can double click this and it'll add it to your scene. You can do that with pretty much any shape you want to make or whatever. So if I just even said sphere, well, I have to type it correctly. So if I said, right, sphere, right, I can make that primitive or whatever needs to happen. Again, that is Shift C. It's a really useful command to be able to use the commander to enter commands. Okay, so one thing we're going to note as soon as we drop this environment in, this here, in here is that it is almost impossible to see our scene. And that's because of our scattering, the tint, um, and the tint over here. So if I have my RS environment selected and I have volume scattering selected here, the big thing I need to do is I need to reduce this scattering some. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that scattering down. Now that's still really bright. Um, the other things you can do, and I'm going to leave this pretty bright um, because it's going to showcase what we're doing in the next steps a little bit more prominently, um, even though it's like way foggier than I would like it to be. The other thing is tint. Um, I can change it to any color I want. Um, and you'll notice, though, as I get less bright, if it's more bright, it's there's more haze. If it's a less bright color, I can see my scene more, right? So I can pull this down and this is also just using this color. The tint color is a good way to adjust that really kind of that de the density of that fog um, in a pretty quick way. So I'm going to leave this reasonably close to 100% white. Um, it's at like 90% right now, which is fine. I can kind of see what's going on, but I still have a lot of fog in there. Okay. So um, I've got that set. Now, the way I've got this scene set here, um, you can really only see the haziness. So let's go ahead and I'm going to close the materials pane for a second so I can see this setting over here. I'm going to say fit window. And this way you can see, right, here's the light. The light is creating all of that fog and haze. And something else you'll note is that it's actually going back the in the other direction. Right, so this is our area light, and you'll note it has these tabs that kind of point in both directions. The way, if you only want this light to shine in a single direction, I can select the light, come down here to the bottom, and where it says bi-directional, turn that off, and it's only going to be lit in one direction, which is great. Now, something else I've done um, is I did have you all add a texture, or I told you you could add a texture, into your color on the light. I've deleted that texture just to make this 100% white so it makes the most sense um, with what we're doing as we go forward. I had Bob Ross in there. We can always add Bob Ross back if we need to. But right now, we just want this to all be white. Okay, so I've got some fog, but it's uniform. It looks pretty crazy. Um, something else, um, I'm gonna save this right now. I've noticed that when I, if I adjust the spread and I'm sliding the slider around, my computer tends to crash and it only really happens or cinema hat tends to crash, but it only really happens when I'm also screen recording. Um, so I think that there's some conflict between QuickTime and uh, Redshift in particular. So um, if I reduce this spread, right, you're gonna see that that's gonna help a lot as well in terms of some of the clarity of the image. And that's just because, right, with spread, right, all the points that are emitting light across this whole surface area of my area light, are the light is essentially coming out in like conical shapes and they overlap, right? That's what the spread is. Um, in this case, right, I'm making that narrower um, and so there's less spread. So that just sort of clarifies where the light is um, and where the light's coming from. So I've just reduced that down to 0.163. Um, I may increase it when we go further, but I'm gonna leave it pretty low for now. Okay. So now we let's say we want to add noise to this and make it more accurate as though there's like, you know, the fog has like thicker parts and thinner parts. Um, so I'm going to open up my material manager again. I'm going to come up here 
and I'm going to go to my materials and you'll see there's a bunch of materials here, but there's not one that um, there's one for environment, but there's not one that says what I want, which is volume noise. If I go down to utilities, however, sorry, noise volume, there is this noise volume material. I'm going to go ahead and create that. And you'll see that this noise volume is, you know, pitch black right now. Um, and where I want to put this is I want to put this on the RS environment object. So I'm going to drop this on the RS environment object. As soon as I do that, you can start to see subtle variations in the intensity of the fog, right? And so if I select my noise volume here, you'll see that um, what's controlling that is an RS noise volume. So if I open this, if I double click my node, this to open up the node editor, you'll see there's just two things in here. There's the output and there is the RS noise that's the input for my volume um, uh, setting, right? And so what I want to do is with this selected, I can change some of these other options here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close the node editor. I've got this up. If I need to um, get back to this and I don't want to open up the editor, I can always just flip open the volume here and I have some options. So one, I can choose my colors. So if I want this to be, you know, never 100% white, like if I want it to be a little bit dimmer overall, right, I could reduce this value um, some and that will make it a little bit uh less intense. I could bring this into the red, which doesn't seem to make any change whatsoever. Oh, maybe I need to actually, here we go. Nope. Yeah. So right, this is telling me that I can use RGB, but it's just black and white values. Um, so if I was to go and drop this even further down in the gray, you can see, right, it's not that much variation. I can, again, set the range here. I'm, I'm going to leave it blasted pretty hard. Um, I'm not going to worry about min, max, and bias right now, but bias is nice because I can say, hey, I want it to be mostly like th the fog to be essentially thinner, um, and I can drop this bias down. That's going to allow me to do that. Or if I want it to be a bit foggier with the same amount of noise, I can boost the bias up. Um, by default, it's at 0.5, right? So it's right in the middle. So there's essentially no bias because it's even. Um, I could also adjust this minimum and maximum. You can see if I boost that up, it basically disappears. Um, if I drop it down below one, um, it makes things a little bit brighter. I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero, right? Just to leave these at the default. I'm not too worried about that. The thing I'm most interested in though, is the noise tab here. And so turbulence is the default. The complexity is set to three. If I increase this to say eight, um, I should get more um, uh, more changes. I can increase my frequency scale. Um, that's going to you know boost things, or I can decrease the frequency scale. Um, right? There's all of these different things. I can increase the amount of distortion. I can increase the distortion scale. And you can kind of see how this is changing. Now, what's nice about this is you'll notice down here is time. Um, and, you know, I can actually um, adjust, like have this, if I was to animate this, it would procedurally animate over time based on the settings I have down here. Because I'm just focusing on getting this going, this is what we're going to use. Um, there's also fractal um, noise, which um, is a thing. Um, it's a little bit different. Each one has, you know, slightly different values. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this at turbulence, but there's also cell noise, um, which again, um, in this case, isn't super exciting for what we're working on. But here, um, I would say this is probably our best bet. One of the other things is under coordinates. Um, I can here, I can adjust the scale so I can make this noise, right, significantly larger, which actually makes it really hard to see. Um, I could even go smaller in scale. Um, I can set this scale to one, one, oh, hold on. I made 
let me undo a couple steps. I don't know what I messed up there. Oh, okay. So I was at 0 0.01, right? So even going up a hair more makes this much bigger. And right, so I can make my noise a little bit bigger this way. I'm going to leave it at 0.1. Um, I have these set to four, but I could set this to one. And you can kind of see what that does to the noise. It can make it look more windswept. Um, I could set this to 10, right? And it's going to, again, change the feeling of that. And I think this is where it actually becomes more accurate in terms of looking like haze and fog. Um, I could put this at one as well. Um, and then the offsets basically just right offset that noise field in 3D space, um, which is similar to setting a different um, seed value for the noise. Um, it just basically pushes it around a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with these settings, one ten one, and you know one tenth um, scale. Okay, so I've got all of this set. So then um, there's a there's one other thing I want to do. It's just something simple we're going to build that will um, allow us to kind of control this and see some of the other cool things that happen when you use lighting in the environment. Because right now it's pretty bland. It's just this light source coming from this um, rectangle light, but there's nothing impeding it. And I want to show you what happens when you build something that impedes it. So very quickly, we're just going to go ahead and create a plane. We are going to set the width of uh, the plane to, let's just say, 60. Um, uh, actually, we should do 30. We're going to leave the length to 400. And then we are going to create a um, cloner. We're going to make the plane a child of the cloner. And then we are going to... Um, Go ahead and use a linear cloner. You'll see that it's stacked vertically at this point, which actually will work pretty well. Um, and they're 50 units apart. Um, we may make this a little bit different, um, but let's go ahead and set this to 12 as the count. Um, so we have 12 of these and we are going to, something I wanna do is I actually wanna create a null. I wanna make the plane a child of the null and then the null, a child of the cloner. And the reason for this is now I can um, essentially open and close these like blinds. So if I use the rotate tool and have the plane selected, um, I should be able to, along the blue axis in this case, right, essentially open and close these as though they are blinds. And now if I um, hold down shift and I make get this all the way to 90 degrees, you can see there's a lot of gaps in here. So what I should probably do is change my Y dimension here from 50 um, to, I'm gonna make it like 31, right? And I can't remember if that's gonna be enough. What did I set the planes width to 30? So yeah, there may be like, ideally there's like a tiny little gap in here um, so that what, even when they're closed and you can see it here, even when they're closed, a little light's gonna sneak through. Okay, so now we're gonna take our cloner and select that. We're gonna have our rotate tool. We're gonna to hold down shift, rotate this 90 degrees. Um, you can start to see, <laughs> this actually looks kind of cool the way it is. It's weird, but whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and move this and I'm gonna put this um, in between our light and our scene. I am going to rotate the view here a little bit. Um, and I'm actually, because this light's peeking over the top, you can already see what's happening with this um, window, but I'm gonna go ahead and push my, the light back just a little bit further away from the scene, like here. And then I'm gonna use the, grab the cloner, and I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, so already down below, you can see I'm getting a little bit of light, but most of that light's being blocked. So now let's go ahead and use the rotate tool and rotate our planes to open the blinds a little bit. And you can see that this is letting light in, um, but it's still, um, if I wrote, and I rotate the view sideways so we can see this just a little bit better, right? You can see that I'm starting to even get these shafts of light that come through, but then it all sort of blends together um, as we get into the scene. And as I said, um, all of my 
settings are a little bit intense right now. Um, but let's go ahead and select our light again. And we're going to dial this spread down even more. I'm just going to go ahead and go to 0 0.6, 0 0.06, right? So you can see at 0 0.06, now I have these long shafts of light where, right, the light isn't spreading anywhere near as much as it was before. Now, light spread tends to happen more either when things are bouncing around more or when the light source is closer. Um, if you have something like sunlight coming through a window, the sun is a very, very long distance away, you're going to have a lot less spread. You're going to have some, but it's going to be substantially less.